Give it back, I'll give it back. You're speaking over me. You have the final word over my life, Jesus. My freedom, my victory is a founding.
rejoice and sing to the everlasting King. With a shout of praise, we exalt your name. You alone will reign, be enthroned in majesty.
Aleluya.
amazing news. Yeah. 
Jesus. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Come on. One more shot of praise to God this morning. Come on. Wow, 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 wow. Welcome to First Assembly, everyone here online and in the overflow room. We're going to have baptism, so I want to invite the amazing baptism candidates to come on up. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Let's go. And if you're new here, we want to welcome you. And what baptism is, is a signification of an inside decision being projected outside to the world. Hey, I have made a decision to follow Christ in my heart, and I'm telling everybody about it. And it's a supernatural encounter that happens, that when we go under the water, we, sing, we represent with Christ's death, and then we come out, we come out a new creation supernaturally. And we are so excited to celebrate with these amazing individuals that are saying, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus, that they are becoming a new person today through baptism. Baptism. Let's go. Are you excited? Are you excited? Come on. So I'm going to ask them a few questions, their name, why they're getting baptized. And then the last question is, are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? And when they say yes, we're going to lift this place off. We're going to shout. We're going to cheer. We're going to get excited about people following Jesus. All right, church. Can you do that? Can you do that? All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. What's your name and why do you want to get baptized today? My name is Ryan, and uh, I've been thinking about getting baptized for a while, and my mom said there was baptisms this weekend, and she sent me the link, so here I am. God bless all the moms out there, somebody. Bless the moms. Bless you, Ryan. And are you going to serve Jesus for the rest of your life? Yes, I am. Give it up for Ryan. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. What's your name, and why do you want to get baptized today? Hi, my name is Tanya, and I want to get baptized because I've felt the Holy Spirit telling me to get baptized for a very long time now, since I moved from being it for, from faith being my parents' faith to being my faith, and I never got the opportunity to because I moved and then I came back and then I was always busy with school and work, but then. When I saw the post about, I, I saw an email about baptism on Easter and it just felt right. And it was like, he has risen and I am going to dedicate my faith and my life to him. So, come on, God even works through the emails. Hallelujah. Let's go. Come on. Are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? Always. Always. You heard it here. Let's go. Tanya. Come on. What's your name and why do you want to get baptized today? My name is Beatrice and I want to get baptized because I want to take the next steps in faith and I want to become a new person in Christ. Come on! That's what it's about, Beatrice! Come on! I love it, I love it. So are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am! Let's go! Beatrice! Come on! Wow, 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 wow. What's your name and why do you want to get baptized today? My name is Jessica. I come from a, a broken home. So when I started learning about God and understanding who God is, I felt a sense of purpose and fulfilled. And I'm really excited to welcome Jesus into my life. <laughs> come on, come on! I love it, I love it. Come on. So are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? Yes. Yes! You heard it here! Let's go! Come on! Come on! Hi, what's your name and why do you want to get baptized today? So my name is Gabriel. Um, my life is a miracle. I'm so grateful for all blessings that I have received. So I love Jesus and it's the important step. Come on, amazing. I love that. I love that, Gabriel. Come on, come on. So are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? Yes, yes. Come on, let's give it up, Gabriel. Come on. I love it. I love it. Come on, what's your name and why do you want to get baptized today? My name is Anastasia and I want to get baptized because I feel like God has called me to be his daughter and 
two years ago when war came to my country, I, I felt like he, he called me by my name and not by my sin. And he wanted to change my life. And John 15 verse 16 says that you did not choose me, I chose you. He wanted me right here, right now, accepting him as my Lord and Savior. And he wanted to change my heart filled with worldly desires into the one filled with his love and there's my dad who came here just to visit me and he's going back to Ukraine and I'll, I don't know when I'll see him again but I trust in God's timing and with him on my side I know that I have nothing to fear and I want people, I want people to realize, I want people to turn their lives to Jesus and to know that he's never going to call you by your sin but he's always going to kill you he's going to he's always going to call you by your name he loves you so much and i'm proud to say that i'm proud to say that i'm a christian and i'm here i'm here to say that jesus will never give up on you he loves you so much and he'll he'll always be with you guys and the doubts that you have in your mind, they're not coming from God's love and grace. They're coming straight from the devil who doesn't want you to turn to Christ. He wants to distract you. He wants to distract you every day. That's the only reason why you're doubting. Guys, I want you to turn to Christ because he's the only one who died on the cross for us. He's the only God who died on the cross for us to pay for our sins. Come on, come on, we got a preacher on our hands here. Somebody, somebody, Anastasia, let's go. Come on, so are you gonna serve Jesus the rest of your life? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you heard it, let's go, Anastasia, come on, come on. Amazing. What's your name and why do you wanna get baptized today? Hi, my name is Yvette. Um, I baptize today because the Holy Spirit saved me, it's time, um, I follow him all my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 <laughs> Come on. So are you going to serve Jesus the rest of your life? Yes, I am. Yes, she is. Come on. Give it up. Give it up. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, they're going to head down with Pastor Jeremiah into the waters. And when they come out of the waters, we're going to cheer, we're going to shout, we're going to dance, we're going to praise, we're going to have a good time. All right, church? You ready? Come on, here we go. Let's get it.
just me, but love worship. Come on. My name is James, and I just want to welcome you to First Assembly. We are so glad you're here. Before you sit down, turn around and say hello to somebody. Give them a big hug. Tell them you're glad they're here. Tell them Happy Easter. Give them a compliment on their outfit. And if there's room towards the middle, if there's open seats, please move towards the middle. Please move towards the middle. We want to make room for everyone. We got about 100 people in the overflow. Shout out overflow. We love y'all. Y'all are amazing. But I see some open seats. If you got a seat open by you, why don't you wave? We still got some friends looking for a seat. And if there is an open seat, just move in one seat towards the middle of the section for me. Do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. Just move in towards the middle and wave if you got a seat beside you. We got some extra seats overflow if you want to make your way in here, some of y'all. But we are so glad you are here. You could be anywhere on a Sunday, but you chose to be here celebrating the resurrection and the life that Jesus provided for us on the cross. And we are so thankful that you showed up. Uh, one thing we're passionate about is we're passionate about connecting people to people. And if you're new here, we would love to meet you. We have a gift for you. We got a free coffee for you. And more than that, we'd love to connect with you and make sure that you know how to get connected into community here. We're a family here at First Assembly and we find it so important to not do life alone. It can be hard sometimes, but this is where the family of God comes in to help walk us forward into God's future for our lives. So if you want to connect, you can either go and scan the QR code on there, the link in the chat, or you can go to one of our Next Steps booths around the lobby, and we would love to meet you and welcome you to First Assembly. And one thing we do every single week here is we take a moment for generosity. And we're going to read a verse together, Galatians 6, 2, on the count of three, one, two, three. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. One of the things I love most about the family of God is that it does that. If I wanted to bank on who's going to be there for me in times of crisis and times of trouble, I know I can count on the church to help carry the burdens together and walk forward again into God's future, His sovereignty, His kindness, His love for our lives. And as we sow into the kingdom being advanced here through this church, that's what we do. We help each other. We carry one another's burdens, not only in the city, around our nation, around the globe, through many of our amazing global workers. So I want to take a moment to pray and invite us as a family this morning, would we sow into what God is doing through this church first assembly. God, we thank you for the privilege it is to give to your kingdom. God, it is an honor to sow. It is an honor to help carry the burdens of one another. And God, I thank you that we have the privilege to be your hands and feet here on this earth, serving the people around us, the family of God, and the people that don't know you. Everyone, God, our world, our city, it's a privilege to serve. So God, I thank you for every single person in here as we give, bless it, bless them, bless their bank accounts, bless their lives, bless their relationship, bless every aspect of their life as we sow into you, your kingdom advancing here. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. We got one announcement before the word. How many people are ready for the word to be preached? Come on, you ready? Come on. Well, the only announcement before that is, is we have Alpha starting on April 9th at 6.30. If you're wondering what Alpha is, it is a gathering where we gather around round tables, have a meal together, and we ask questions and have conversations about life, faith, and spirituality. So maybe you're new here to church for the first time. This would be a great place for you to get connected into the community and to know more about what we believe as a church. And it's also, if you are in here and you know people in your neighborhood or your workplace that maybe could benefit from conversations like this, any conversation, any question can be asked. There's lots of open conversation. It's a great place to invite friends. So that started on April 9th at 6.30 on Tuesday nights with dinner. So thank you, First Assembly. You're amazing. You ready for the word? Come on. Well, let's give a huge round of applause to our pastor, Pastor Ben Johnson. Come on, give it up. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday. So good to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us online and in the room and in the overflow. So happy to have you here. We have lots to celebrate today. It is Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. 
and we're going to get to celebrating the most important reason why we're here, and that is the resurrection. But we also have some news in our family, and I want to celebrate the fact that our daughter, our eldest daughter, Chelsea, got engaged to Andrew Bunnell yesterday. We got another wedding coming up in the family, so we're excited. So if you see Chelsea and Andrew there in the first service, uh, just wish them your congratulation. But we are here to celebrate, most importantly, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bible today, John chapter 10, I want to start us off by looking at a verse in John chapter 10, where Jesus says, he says, I am the door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he'll go in and out and he'll find pasture. What Jesus is doing here is he's giving us a picture of who he is. He is saying here that he is the door. He is the gateway. He is the exclusive pathway to eternal life, to salvation. And so we can come by Jesus, through Jesus. He also said that he's the way, the truth, and the light. He also says that he is the resurrection and the life. And anyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And that's why we're celebrating Easter. That's why we're celebrating this Resurrection Sunday. Through his death, through his resurrection, Jesus paid for our sins. And he opened the door wide to salvation, inviting all whosoever will to come and to experience eternal life you know the resurrection is the cornerstone of our faith and we believe that as followers of Christ we believe that as Christians that Jesus actually died he physically died and was buried and it wasn't a metaphor it wasn't just an illustration Jesus literally and physically conquered death hell and the grave he rose again he's alive today and he's coming back and that's what we celebrate on this Easter Sunday Jesus is the door, the way to salvation. This morning, I want us to look at the Easter story. The Easter story, we find doorways that serve as pictures, that move us beyond human doubt and fear. And they invite us into a personal relationship with the living Christ, Jesus, who is the door. And I want to share a message with you this morning. I'm entitling The Doorways of Easter. The doorways of Easter. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these moments in your presence. And Lord, on this Easter Sunday, we rejoice and we celebrate. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave, that we can put our trust in you completely, that we can enter by you completely. You are the way, you are the door. And we pray, Lord, that you would change us today in your presence. You would remind us each one personally, what this Easter message means to us and how it changes everything. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. The doorways of Easter. I remember a television game show uh, that I used to watch when I was younger. You may remember this show. And, and what they would do in the game show is people would have an opportunity to, to win a prize, but they had to choose the right door. Do you remember this one? You could choose door number one, door number two, or door number three. And usually it was a, a really big prize. Like if you chose the right door, then you could win a trip anywhere in the world, Hawaii, Florida. Who, where do you want to go this morning? Come on, shout it out to me. Where do you want to go? All expenses paid, trip to Hawaii. All right, I love it. Or you could win something like, you remember this, a brand new car. If you chose the right door, but you had to choose the right door. If you chose the wrong door, they would still have a prize for you. It would be like a consolation prize, like maybe a blender or something. How many people are excited about winning a blender? Just what I always wanted. But if you chose the right door, you would enter into something that would be new. You would experience something that maybe you never dreamed possible for your life. And you would win this incredible prize. And doorways are like that. They often represent to us new opportunities, an adventure, something that maybe we weren't expecting, that we could step into, we could discover, we could, we could know. Our life would change. Doors open a whole new world to us when we walk through them many times. Sometimes we walk through doors that literally change our life forever. 
I remember standing at an altar with my wife, and as we walked down the back, uh, the, the, through the middle aisle of the church, out the back doors, our lives changed forever. We were now a married couple. I remember carrying each one of our children home from the hospital, and as I walked through the threshold on the way out from the hospital, carrying my newborn baby home, my life changed forever. Sometimes the doors we walk through completely transform our lives, change everything. But let's be real, not all doors lead to sunny destinations and happy days. Sometimes doors, they close. Sometimes doors, they simply don't open. We've been waiting for a door to open. Or we're disappointed by the fact that a door is not opening or it seems like it's closed. They become barriers. We can't see beyond because seemingly the door is closed. We've all experienced this at different times. We've all experienced Closed doors, disappointments. It feels like the door maybe has been slammed shut. When this happens, it brings a sense of disappointment. It brings a sense potentially of fear of the unknown. I want a door to open. We feel like there's something for us, but it seems at the time that the door is closed. Disappointment and even fear. This is how I believe the disciples felt on that very first Easter morning. They felt like the door had closed. All their hopes and dreams, while they were with Jesus for three and a half years, they, they were growing in love and in friendship with him. And they had witnessed miracles and they had experienced so many things. And they had hopes and dreams. And these disciples were hoping that Jesus would be their Messiah, that he would rescue as a, as a king and now he's dead. They had witnessed Jesus brutally tortured, killed on a Roman cross, his lifeless body wrapped in linen and buried in a borrowed tomb. It seemed like all hope was lost. The door had been closed. It was dark. Yet the message of Easter, friends, is the message that goes beyond closed doors and shattered dreams. The message of Easter is that we have hope. The message of Easter is that Jesus is alive, that he is risen, but they did not know that yet. Now in the Easter narrative, we come across distinct doorways. We come across the shaken door, the tomb. We come across the shared door, the inn, and the shut door, the upstairs room. Each of these doors invites us to walk through and encounter the resurrected Christ personally in our lives. And so I want us to look at these doors just for a few moments. First of all, the shaken door. This is the tomb. This door invites us to come and see that Jesus is no longer in this tomb. This door invites us in, and we must walk through this door of Easter to recognize for ourselves that Jesus is no longer there. It was a shaken door. You see, it was that early part of the morning on that first Easter morning when the women were making their way to the tomb. They were bringing spices and oils and ointment to anoint the body of Jesus, which was the custom. And as they came up, the crack of dawn, the sun just coming up, they were coming to the tomb. And on their way, they said to one another, who is going to roll away this stone? You see, they knew Jesus was dead. They knew that he had died. They had witnessed this themselves. And they had to come and, and find a, a, a somebody. Maybe there's somebody there that could roll away the stone so that we could enter and that we could anoint his body. Jesus, though, friends, was not in that grave. You see, it was quite a scene that day. As they came, they came upon the tomb and the Bible says that there was an earthquake and there was an angel that had then rolled away this stone. And I love this because the angel was sitting on top of the stone. It's such a picture in my mind. And, and this angel scared the guards who were guarding the tomb so much that the Bible says that they, they, they shook and they laid there like dead people. Could you imagine that? So I don't know what this angel did. Could you imagine that? These guards are just hanging out. It's just a normal, you know, oh, this is an easy one. We just get to hang out. This guy's dead. He's been dead for a few days. <laughs> this is easy. They're just kind of hanging out. And all of a sudden, this angel shows up. And it must have been a scary angel. And it seems like angels are scary because in the Bible, they're always saying, hey, guys, don't be afraid. 
So they must look kind of, kind of, kind of nasty. I don't know. Like we have these pictures of angels, and they, you know, they're up in heaven, and they're wearing white, and they're eating Philadelphia cream cheese and crackers. And, like that's our picture of angels. But, or maybe angels can change forms. You know, because sometimes we can, we can uh, entertain an angel. We don't know. It's kind of like in human form. So maybe these angels came, and they're like, hey, let, you know, this angel is like, all right, we're going to scare these guards. Like, we're going to scare the life out of them. And these guards are just hanging out there, and the angels come up, and they're just like, boo! And these guys are just like, ah! And they're shaking on the ground, and they're laying there dead. So now the women come up with the spices, and they see that the stone had been rolled away. And now there's this angel, and now he's all chill, sitting up there on the top of the stone, drinking a latte. Hey, ladies, good morning. How's it going? And these women were just like, and he's like, don't be afraid. He's like, here's the deal. Come on in. Have a look. The tomb is empty. You're looking for Jesus. He's not here. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you came looking for Jesus. That's why you're here. That's why we're all here. And Jesus, yes, he was crucified. And you're right. He was crucified, he was dead, and he was buried. But the angel said, he is not here. He is risen. He is risen. And the angel said this. He says, come and see for yourselves. Come and see. And we must walk through this door of Easter. We must come and see for ourselves and recognize that Jesus is no longer in that tomb. You can visit the tomb of any famous person, any leader of a religion around the world, any famous religious celebrity or movie star or anybody. You can, you can go visit anybody's tomb. But when you go visit the tomb of Jesus, he's not there. It's an empty tomb. It was empty then, and how many know it is still empty today because Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus wasn't in that grave. The angel said, come see for yourself. We know that Peter and John, and John's gospel, John, John and, and Peter came running to the tomb, and, and I, I like what, what Peter says, or what John says. He says, he beat Peter. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> Not that that even matters, but... Anyway, they got there, and they, they stooped in, and they, they looked into the tomb to see for themselves. And all they could see was grave clothes. All they could see was a napkin or a handkerchief that was folded neatly beside the grave clothes. Jesus, you know, just like, well, you know, hey, I just resurrected, but before I leave, I should maybe clean the place up. You know, my heart is to please the Father. So he just kind of folds up, and, and this was the head covering. Very interesting, though, in Jewish culture and tradition, when the man of the house, when, when the leader of the home, the father, would, would step away from his table, he would take that napkin and he would fold it. And what that meant was this. Check this out. I'm coming back again. I'm coming back again. And so there's a picture there of that napkin folded. And so Jesus, and so they look inside and they see that the body was not there. The shaken door of the tomb, it, sh it shook and it opened and it opened so that we could look in. You see, Jesus did not need that door. To, he, he, he did not need that angel to roll away the tomb. He could have walked out of that tomb any way he wanted to. He could have done it himself. But the angel was there not to open the tomb so that Jesus could get out. But the angel was there to open the tomb so that you and me and all of us could look in and see that he's no longer there. The shaken door of the tomb says, come and see. Jesus is no longer there. There's people are, well, hey, isn't Jesus just a legend? Maybe people will say, this all sounds nice, this Easter story and everything, but was Jesus really, did he really live? Was he, isn't he just a legend? Isn't he just like a myth, like the Easter bunny or something else? Friends, Jesus, you can ask any historian, you can go to any university, and any scholar worth their weight, is going to tell you that there was a historic Jesus who lived, who claimed to be the Son of God. So we have to do something with that. Also, every disciple that followed Jesus, almost all of them, died a, a painful death of martyrdom. In fact, things like hanging upside down on crosses, they, they were all martyrs. Nobody's going to be a martyr for somebody who's just a legend. Nobody's going to give their life. We're not going to see the church explode. There's so many rational reasons to, to recognize that Jesus actually lived and died and that he rose again. You say, well, he rose again. Okay, maybe he lived, but did he really rise again? Maybe he just swooned. Maybe, you know, Jesus, they put him on the cross with a couple nails in his hands and, ah, he, you know, he kind of survived. He's, you know, he's got super strength. He's like, 
You know, he got went off the cross and he, in there a day or two, had a good sleep, kind of stretched. He was like, you know what, actually, I'm feeling pretty good. Doing pretty good. And, you know, maybe Jesus kind of got up out of that grave himself. Friend, he didn't swoon. The, the Roman scourging, the, the, the whipping, the cat of nine tails filled with, with chips of bone and metal and glass that would have been draped across his body, whipped across his body. Oftentimes, people's organs would be exposed and they would die even before they were hung on a cross. But we know that Jesus on that cross, that as he hung there, also there was a spear. There, his side was pierced and blood and water flowed. And those in the medical profession could, testify, or could, could testify to this, that when blood and water flow, it speaks of and is evidence of heart failure, a broken heart. And Jesus' heart was literally broken on that cross physically and metaphorically for you and for me. His heart broken, but he completely died. He was carried off of that cross. He was wrapped in linen. He was placed in that tomb. He didn't just swoon. You say, well, okay, maybe Jesus lived. Maybe, maybe he actually did die. But maybe somebody stole his body. Grave robbers. Can I just encourage you that grave robbers, if there were some grave robbers, you know, it was Ted and Frank. And Ted and Frank were like, let's go steal the body of Jesus. And the Romans are paying us some cash. So let's go there early. Let's pay off the soldiers. Let's get his body. And so, and so they go there and they're like, all right, Frank, uh, hey, let's take the body. And, and the other guy's like, oh yeah, before we take the body, let's actually just hold on. Let's lay the clothes nicely here. And let's fold this nice little napkin on the counter. Could you, could great, would grave robbers even have time? Would they even think to do that? There is so much evidence that points to the empty tomb. But I'm telling you, the shaken door was again, it was not so that Jesus could get out of it, so that we could look in, so that you could look in. And you must pass through with Jesus this door of Easter, the shaken door, to come and see that he is not there. He is actually alive. And he's coming back. This is the shaken door. The second door is the shared door, the inn. Later that day, a couple of disciples were walking to a village called Emmaus. And as they walked, they were talking about all the things that had taken place, all the things that had happened. And they were followers of Jesus. They were, they were disciples. One of the disciples, his name was Cleopas. And him and the other disciple, they walked, and as they they talked about all the things that took place in Jerusalem and they were trying to figure it out because now they had heard from some women rumors that Jesus was actually alive, that people had seen him and they looked in the tomb, he was gone. And so they're talking about all these things and Jesus comes and walks up beside them as they were journeying toward this little village. But it says that they were kept from seeing him. Oh, they could... They, they begin to talk to him and he began to teach them and unpack all the scriptures and show all the prophecies that, that, that spoke of him and, and their hearts were burning within them, they said later. They, but their eyes were still blinded and somehow as Jesus walked with them, they, 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 they couldn't recognize him. Remember that show, Undercover Boss? <laughs> you know, that guy kind of looks like our boss, but he doesn't, he's not really our boss. And so Jesus, the undercover boss, comes up, and they don't really recognize him, but there's something about him. But as they're getting close, at the end of the day, they said to Jesus, would you stay with us? We want to keep talking. We want to keep connecting with you. You're fascinating, and what you know about Scripture, and this is making sense to us, and, and oh, our hearts are burning, and why don't you come and stay with us? There's an inn right here. There's vacancy. It says right there, vacancy. Let's go. There's a pool. There's a hot tub. Let's go. It's going to be great. Jesus, come hang out with us. Let's have a meal, and then we'll go for a hot tub later. And so they're, they're on the, that's actually not in the Bible, so just, I'm just kind of embellishing that part, okay? So are you guys okay with that? Okay. Tough crowd. No. <laughs> hey, Jesus, stay with us. So he comes and sits at the table with them breaks bread. And at the table, Jesus did what he always did with bread. He took the bread. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread. He gave the bread. And it was at the breaking of bread, that picture of his broken body and, and, the, and the cup at that meal, Jesus was revealed. They could see who he was. They could see who he was. But they recognized him and then he disappeared. You see, they said, when are, were our hearts not burning? 
The principle is, is this. We, we learn from the shared door, this story of the inn, this, this door of the inn where they beckon Jesus to come and stay, that whatever road you may find yourself on today, maybe your heart is burning, maybe you don't see Jesus clearly, maybe you've heard some things about Jesus or other religions or other ways, but, but today there's something happening, your heart is burning within you like these disciples, there's something to it. Maybe you can't see, maybe your eyes are blinded, But Jesus is about to open your eyes to show himself to you. This shared door is an invitation to say, Lord, I want you to come a little closer. I want you to reveal yourself to me. Whatever road you may find yourself on, Jesus will step right in as you open that door to him. No matter your doubt, no matter your wondering, no matter your fear, whether you recognize him or not, the risen Christ is already walking with you today. And he's waiting for the shared door to be offered to him. Come, come and stay. Come and meet me. I want you to reveal yourself to me. Will you do that today? Some of you have been invited by a friend. Some of you have come this Easter because you felt something in your heart. And you're here today. Jesus is saying, invite me in. Welcome me in. I want to reveal myself to you. The final door is the shut door. It's the shut door of the upstairs room. You see, later on in that day, after Emmaus, these disciples that, that met Jesus on that road, they got so excited, they ran, they ran to meet the other disciples. And they told them, they said, guys, this, this is true. The rumors you're hearing is true. We, we met Jesus, and at the breaking of bread, we saw him, and our eyes were open. And our eyes that were blinded are now, were now eyes that were burning with the reality of who he is. He revealed himself to us. But these guys, these disciples, they're all, but they're hiding. There, 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 was, there was fear, there was confusion. Even though the most historic event that has ever taken place in the history of the world just took place, Jesus rose literally from the grave. These disciples were hiding in an upstairs room, full of fear and confusion and disbelief. And sometimes you and I can hide in confusion, disbelief. We can hide in places where we shut Jesus out. Well, we all have the tendency sometimes in our lives to shut Jesus out. We wouldn't necessarily want to admit that, but it's true. Nor would we ever really want to shut Jesus out if we truly knew how much he would transform our lives. But we we shut him out sometimes because of our own insecurities. We don't feel good enough. We, we, We don't feel like this could actually be the case. Maybe this good news is actually too good. That there's nothing I can do that would stop me from where it would stop God from loving me. There's nothing I could do or nothing I couldn't do. He just loves me. He loves me. He's forgiven me. Maybe it's just too good, but we shut him out. Or maybe we're confused or we have doubts or fears or whatever it may be like these disciples. Whatever it is that may be holding you behind a shut door that you haven't received Christ into your life, can I encourage you this morning, fear not, because Jesus can walk right through into any room with a shut door. Because it says in the Bible that Jesus walked right into the room. He didn't even use the door. The door was locked, the door was shut, and Jesus all of a sudden walked right into the room. And he's like, hi guys, how you doing? You know why Jesus didn't need to use that door? You know why Jesus wasn't bothered by a shut door? Because Jesus is the door. And whatever room you find yourself locked in, fear not, because Jesus is the door, and he can walk into any situation or any place where you feel locked up inside, where you feel broken, where you feel ashamed, where you feel, where you feel like it's too late for you. Whatever the, the, the circumstances, whatever the lie, whatever the, the, the voice in your head is telling you that Jesus is not for you, whatever room you find yourself locked in, in grief, in pain, whatever it may be that they were experiencing at this time, Jesus says, I don't, I'm not threatened by a locked door, I'm not threatened by a shut door, I am the door, and he walked in. And he said, look, guys, here's my hands, here's my feet. Reach out and believe. And then one week later, you see, Thomas, the doubting disciple, he wasn't there the first time. And, and Thomas, he, he heard about this. He's like, guys, what, what happened? Well, Jesus, he came right in, he showed us his, he's like, I'm not gonna believe it unless I see Jesus. A week later, Thomas is there, and Jesus comes in, he says, look at my hands, look at my feet, touch my side, experience for yourself, You see, there's no shut door that is closed permanently. When Jesus enters that room, everything changes. Like these disciples, we can be shut away, shut back with fear and doubt. It can lock us up, our fears, our failures, our grief. 
This morning, Jesus wants to walk right into whatever shut room, whatever you've shut off in your life. Jesus wants to walk in and show himself to you and say, reach out and believe. As they were there, Jesus walked into that room. He said, peace be with you. He wants to bring his peace to you today. Whatever circumstance you're in, he wants to show you his reality, his scars. I, I, I like this. It says that Jesus even ate some fish and he ate some honeycomb. Because they're like, you, you must be a ghost. You just walk through a wall. He's like, no, I, I'm not a ghost walking through walls. I'm actually real. But I am Christ. I am resurrected. And no door can hold me out. And Jesus said, well, hey, there's some broiled fish. Give me a bite of that fish. And then he went over. There's some honeycomb. He's literally, he said, I'm showing you I'm, I am real. And God wants to show you today that he is real. There's no shut door that could hold you back from his reality. And friends, maybe this morning you say, well, my life is messy. I have fears. I have doubts. My situation is bleak. I've shut myself off from believing. Today is your day, I believe that. Is your day to surrender? Is your day to believe? Is your day to reach out and believe like Thomas? Because Jesus said that you're blessed when you don't see and you believe. Thomas says, well, now I see it. Now I can believe it. And Jesus said, there's a blessing for you when you actually believe, even if you don't see it. But Jesus will reveal himself to you through a shut door. You know, yesterday we were at the Seton Easter egg hunt. And I think there's a couple thousand people down there. It was amazing. And, and some of you were there and and just throughout the day, I had a chance to speak with several different people that were visiting, some people from the church, some of you, some people from the community. And I got speaking to one gentleman, and he was telling me, he said, well, this is, this is uh, great to meet you. He said, you know, and I introduced myself, and he found out I was the pastor, and he said, tell me a little bit of your story. He said, well, we just moved here to Calgary, so we just live right down here, but he said, we... We, re we originally came from Europe. And I said, well, tell me about that. I said, do you have a church background? Are you a Christian? He says, well, he says, not long ago, he said, I was in Europe. And he said, I, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God at all. I had no, no faith at all. He said, I knew about the church, but it didn't make sense to me. He said, then my wife and I moved to another country. And we were there just very temporarily. But when we were there, we met some authentic Christians and something happened, and my heart began to open to the reality of Christ. And I began to, and I'm paraphrasing this, but he was saying, I became very spiritually hungry. It was like he was locked in a dark place. He was locked behind closed doors, but somehow God opened his heart. Like it says in the book of Acts, where it says the Holy Spirit opened the heart of Lydia. God can open hearts, and he's still opening hearts today. And his heart was opened and he said, then we just moved here to Calgary. He says, because God's been working in our lives and I want to know more about Jesus and I want to know more about God. He said, we've been looking for a church. And I said to him, I said, well, right here at that school, that's our Seton campus. I said, right there, tomorrow morning at 1030, you can come with your whole family. I met his wife. I met his kids. He says, this is great. He says, because I've been over here across the street and I've been knocking on the door of this church over here. There's a church building. He says, and nobody answered that door. And I'll just be frank, that's a church nearby that preaches the false gospel. And he was knocking on that door, but God saw him knocking. God saw him knocking, and he said, don't knock on that door any longer, but come and knock on this door. And as he knocked, I said, you can go right there, and I'm believing this morning. I don't know what happened. I've got to talk to Pastor Hunter, but I believe in this morning that that man surrendered his life fully to Jesus and his family. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how locked up we may feel or we may think we are. God is moving. God is working. Jesus is walking through every door. He's, he's walking through every tomb. Every tomb is shaken so that we can experience him. Every, every door that is an opportunity to invite him in, he says, I want to share that meal with you. And Jesus himself is going to walk through every obstacle and fear, and he'll meet you right where you are today. Whether it's a doorway or a tomb, doorway upstairs, no matter what it is, Jesus is calling you this Easter to walk through these doors together. Jesus said this. He said, here's the open door. He said, here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Jesus is saying, as much as he is the door, he is saying there's also a door in your heart and in my heart that he invites us to open. He's knocking upon our heart's door. And as we open our heart's door, we step into his reality. We step into eternal life, forgiveness of sin, hope. Hope for our future. 
You see, the doorways of Easter are to be walked through. They are symbols and invitations for us to experience the transformation that is available to us through Christ and his resurrection, through the power of encountering the risen Christ personally in our lives. So this morning, I would invite you to stand with me, and I want to just pray for us today before we go. And I want to pray for those, first of all, this morning. If you would close your eyes and bow your heads, I want to give anyone here this morning, I believe that there are maybe several people here today. There were in our first service, and I believe there will be several here today. And today is your opportunity to say yes to Jesus. Maybe you've had doubts. Maybe you've been on the fence. Maybe, you, maybe today you've been away from God, but you want to come back to God. You want to make a renewed decision. Or maybe for you, it's the very first time. A lot of religious leaders have done a lot of great things, and they've had some good ideas, but there's no other person in history that conquered death, hell, and the grave, that actually physically rose from the grave. This is what we bank on. This is the cornerstone of our faith. And as we put our trust in him, we can know that our sins are forgiven. We're going to heaven. And you want to know that today. You want that assurance of salvation today. You want that assurance in your life that your sins have been cleansed, that you're in right standing with God, that you're going to heaven. You want to, you want to make sure that Easter 2024 is your moment. And then we're going to help you. We have a Bible for you. We're going to help you. All that stuff. This is just the step. This is just stepping through the threshold and you're saying yes to Jesus today. If you could just close your eyes and bow your heads just in these moments. I wonder if there would be anyone here today and I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And before I do, you would say today, Pastor, would you remember me in this prayer? I want to pray that prayer today. That's me. Would you just lift your hand and just raise it there for a moment? And I want to remember you in that prayer today. Just hold it up in the room. Just raise your hand and hold it up in the room. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Just hold it up there for a moment. Great. I see you, but more importantly, God sees your heart. He sees your hand reaching to him today. And so friends, let's all pray together. Let's all pray out loud to help these ones who are coming to Christ, whether it be for the first time or a renewed commitment today. Just pray this from your heart. Everyone praying together. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I ask you to come into my life to cleanse me, to forgive me, to make me brand new. Today, I am born again as I put my trust in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, friends. Let's just give our praise to God this morning. Amen. That's just so fantastic. And a lot of people are making decisions today. At the end of the service, up at the front, we'll have a Bible for you. Don't leave today without getting a Bible. We're praying with someone at the front. We're going to worship one more time. But let me just pray one more time before we worship. And then Pastor James is going to come off and just come up and just close the service. Father, thank you for this opportunity today to be in your presence. Lord, I ask for your grace and your power to rest upon us. Let us walk through the doorways of Easter and experience you in a new and a fresh way. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship one more time. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord of heaven. so much for being here first assembly you are all incredible family we're so glad that you came and if you prayed that prayer for the first time to accept jesus or rededicate, rededicate your life to him 
We want to invite the prayer team up to the front right now. And we, again, would love to pray with you, get you a Bible, get you connected. And if you're new, make sure to stop by Next Steps. And again, we got a gift for you. We love you, First Assembly. You are amazing. Have an amazing Easter. He is risen. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you next week. Bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today for Online Church at First Assembly. I hope that you felt encouraged. I hope that you felt a sense of hope. And you know, as the message was shared today, there was an opportunity for people to receive Jesus. And I hope that you prayed that prayer and that you made that decision in your heart. You know, I'd love to just pray with you one more time because we want to help you on your journey with Jesus. We want to help you take your next steps. Why don't we just pray together right now? Father, thank you for this opportunity for our friends from all around the world to be joining in on this service. I pray, Lord, that as your word went forth today, and Lord, your Holy Spirit was at work in their hearts and in their lives, right where they are watching, Lord, that you would do something so real in their lives. I thank you for the hope that there is in Jesus as we put our trust in you. Thank you, God, for the free gift of salvation. Thank you for dying on the cross for each one of us and offering us free life. Amen. You know, friend, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you can know today that you're born again, that you've started a new journey with Jesus. We want to help you on your journey. Right on the screen, you will see a way that you can connect with us. We want to give you a Bible. We want to help you continue to live your life for Jesus and take those next steps. We hope that you join us again real soon, either online or in person. God bless you, and thanks again for joining us at First Assembly.